Larson. 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 Bob Rude. The B stands for best. What kind of stupid name is that? The stupid name is the best pro wrestling podcast where we talk about the best pro wrestling in the world. My name is Tommy Stryker. Joining me is Taco. What up? And Joe is here. You stupid idiot. And uh, <laughs> we got, face. got a lot to, <laughs> lot to talk about this week. We got uh, Money in the Bank coming up this weekend. Fucking hostile right off as the bat. As well as NXT TakeOver. We get our predictions for those. Ooh. Our best of the week. Our matches of the week. And of course the news and pet peeves and all kinds of other crap along the way uh, to talk about here uh, on the best pro Pro Wrestling Podcast. If you're new to the show, thanks for checking it out. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Help us out. Spread the word. Social media, best pro wrestling podcast at gmail.com. And that's not social media. Uh, social media is at BPW Podcast. <laughs> anyway, links to all the social media and stuff. Share in us the- everywhere but Google Plus because <laughs> nobody uses that. Right. <laughs> uh, all the links in the description, not the Google Plus because, again, we're not on there and nobody uses it. Uh, so we did, we, we recorded earlier today the our Strong Honor podcast where we talked about Ring of Honor and New Japan. So all the Dominion coverage over there talking Okada versus Omega mm-hmm. and Omega finally winning the big championship finally. over there. Uh, so <laughs> check that out for sure. We'll talk a little bit about that on today's show on this side as well. But we talk about the best. Correct. We do talk about the best. So let's get, let's get into our hashtag the best. So best. let's get into Raw. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the best of the week. The B stands for best. Taco, what was your best of the week? My best of the week is uh, I'm pretty stoked that uh, that they announced that uh, um, Apollo Cree or what's the fucking Apollo Cruz is gonna take on a uh, um, it's Austin or Creed. Austin Creed. <laughs> I'm all sorts of the- <laughs> Xavier, Xavier Woods. Woods. Xavier Woods. <laughs> um, well, they've been calling you to like I'm coming for you, Creed. I'm coming for you, Kenneth. But yeah, <laughs> they announced that it was gonna be him and uh, Kenny Omega fighting each other in some big giant street fighter competition, and WWE even fucking has been you know spreading the word about it, and just got even more interesting when. Uh, uh, fucking New Day and the rest of the Young Bucks are getting involved now. So right. we got full on New Day versus Elite and some fucking video game for a giant, you know, tournament. But uh, I-, I chose it for my best because it's just, uh, you know, it- it's a big move. You know, Kenny Omega just fi- finally won that championship. Young Bucks are champions now. New Day, they have fucking, you know, big names in WWE doing what they do and everything. And uh, <laughs> it- it's just cool that, um, you know, uh, WWE is really promoting. Promoting them, really, you know, saying the names, acknowledging them, acknowledging the IWGP <laughs> Heavyweight Champion shit, you know. You know, I, I'm still kind of having in the back of my head of, JR, don't appear on UFC TV, you're going to be taken off the banner kind of mentality. <laughs> <laughs> now here they are, you know, it's just such a, a surreal time to be a wrestling fan right now. Uh, you know, just little things like this are just like, oh, wow, god damn. And also, shout out to Xavier Woods, he just won like a fuck ton of money for uh, Connor's Cure for oh. uh, winning first place in that fucking Fortnite game. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, good for him, man. Well, and the thing, it, it's a perfect mashup because obviously you've got uh, Xavier Woods. He's got up, up, down, down. He mm-hmm. does all the video game stuff. And then you've got Kenny Omega. He he did a fucking Street Fighter commercial. Like, yeah. he played a character in Street Fighter. So this is, like, <laughs> this is the game they're facing each other. Why not? I mean, it's cross-promotion. Everybody wins. Everybody's having fun. Everybody's happy. So, again, it's a fun time in wrestling. Mm. And, and these two have, have gone back and done stuff with video games before. I think I think Kenny has even been on Up, Up, Down, Down. I believe he has. has. Maybe once. So I've, that's something I've never... I'm not a video game guy, so I haven't checked it out. So, uh, yeah, that's cool stuff. Joe, what is your best of the week? It won't go there. The B <laughs> stands for best. I was, like, I was, I was waiting for Bo. I was waiting for Bo, man. No, I'm just – honestly, the perfect buildup that they've done for NXT Chicago. What is this, two or three? Uh, this is four, I four? think, actually. Jesus. Either way, I mean, you've got Lars. Or no, and- this is two. What the hell am I talking about? Oh, 
I, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Brooklyn later. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of Brooklyn later this but summer. But you've got Lars versus Alistair. That's going to be a monster match. He, they've done perfect build up in him squashing Alistair a couple times now. Uh, you've got the Velvet Team team versus Ricochet. Like the build up for that again. We're still fucking orgasming from that flip out of the <laughs> ring. It's, ridi- <laughs> it's ridiculous how much I've watched that clip over and over again. Well, it's a super real life superhero landing. Uh, you've got what is it? Uh, Undisputed Era versus Team One Two. You know, I'm, yep. that's just going to be a fucking that's a slobber knocker of a match right there. And then capping it off, uh, uh, Shayna Baszler and Nikki Cross. Yep. yep. And again, the Gargano and Champion. That's the one fight. I'm getting. That's the one I was trying <laughs> to get to. But again, yeah. we talked about it over on Strong Honor again. New Japan doing these long. Long bi- bi- storylines with huge payoffs at the end. This is exactly what we're getting with Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. It's been the perfect story, perfect heel versus face situation, getting his wife involved. Like <laughs> everything is in is is amazing about NXT altogether. Like I've just been completely satisfied, and we know I NXT Takeover is gonna be better than Money in the Bank, and they have double <laughs> they have yes. double the matches. Yes, sir. Double so, like, I'm just more I'm, than double. <laughs> I'm more than I'm more excited uh, every time there's an NXT takeover before like a, a WWE pay per view. I feel like a double mint commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we'll get into it when we get into our predictions a little bit more. But yeah, just even this week's NXT, the uh, one really great match in the main event. I'll talk about that later. But uh, just fucking Lars going after Alistair Black at the end, hitting multiple uh, what is he freak called? accident? Freak accident. My favorite thing, Lars hits the freak accident but then freaks out for a second right after he hits it just like flails his arms and screams at him for a few seconds the way he bounces up from that move is awesome though. (laughs) yeah so well fucking they did such a good job too of not just hyping us up for this weekend but kind of post nxt takeover you know we're seeing new looks new attitudes new feuds starting from this week's nxt it's just like Fuck, now I'm only in my hype for Saturday. I'm hyped for next Wednesday's episode, too. Yeah, yeah, with <laughs> Dakota Kai and and uh, and the EST, mm-hmm. Bianca Blue Lips. Uh, <laughs> and then he, I think you got uh, War Machine versus the Mighty. TM, or yeah, the former TM61, well, the Mighty, yeah. So, so now it's just like you're already planting that in our head of like what's going to come out of TakeOver and what's going to happen after now. <laughs> so it, it's such a great job. The Yay, B team. stands for... <laughs> Best. My best of the week is the entire Dominion event from uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. What a great show. Great card. Uh, y- you know, it's easy to have a really great show when almost all of the titles that are on the line change hands, which was what the case, but so many good stories coming out of that event with Jericho mm-hmm. beating Naito for the IWGP Intercontinental title, Kenny Omega finally defeating Okada, and uh, uh, Hiromu Takahashi, who won the Best of Super Juniors last week, defeating the champion Will Osprey this week. Yes. Great matches. Great top three gave Osprey main events. The D. And uh, yeah, gave <laughs> Osprey the D. Uh, and even almost uh, as an aside, the Young Bucks in their first chance to win the heavyweight yeah. tag team titles uh, beat Evil and Sonata and won those championships. So they've look, been away from Japan for a while, so they needed some belts. Hang around <laughs> for a little bit. We're gonna like a bunch of beefcakes now. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome show. That's my best of the week for uh, for that. For as far sure. as that goes, so Dominion, check that out, and make sure you check out Strong Honor. We cover it all over there. Get into all the cool stories coming up, uh, coming out of New Japan and Dominion. All right, let's talk a little bit of the news now. Change the subject. Oh. Pro wrestling news. We have quite a bit of news for you. Taco, I know, I know you got some things to say about CM Punk and his losing effort against Mike Jackson. God, what is there to fucking say? Like, <laughs> just, you know, I, 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 I'm one of those people. It's like, yeah, man, fucking good for you for stepping in there. That's not fucking any easy task, especially with all those fucking people staring at you and you, you know, you're in day in and day out, and it, 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 it sucks. You know, you just spent what three years of his time to lose two fights, essentially in the UFC. But you know, you fucking, I, I, I want to see him doing what Batista was doing. You know, working the grind and no name promotions, right, uh, like right. Lashley was doing. Like it just fucking shooting him right to a spot in the UFC. And you know, I'm not the only one to say it, but there's you know guys on the undercard. Essentially, it's like, dude, you fucking took their their spots, and you know, it, you, you kind of see some of the reports of the money being made. He made like five hundred 
thousand dollars and the other homeboy made like 23 grand you know so it's like uh, ouch yeah i get it it's a cash grab it, it, it you know being someone that likes you know uh, the mma it's <clears throat> it is kind of insulting i get it you know it's i kind of mentioned it on the uh, on um a strong honor where, you know, it, it should be about, you know, the fighters or the wrestlers, the the stars, the ones going out there, not the business, not the company. And that's kind of what WWE feels like right now. And that's what UFC feels like right now is you have this big media company that fucking bought them out that deals with Hollywood, Hollywood and shit like that. Mm. And it feels very like, you know, UFC, UFC, it's not about you, it's about us. And it's like, yes, we know that, but still, let these guys shine, let them be stars and everything. And, you know, CM Punk, he, he you know, he's not going to take take it for granted. He even said himself, I don't deserve to be on the pay-per-view. I, <laughs> be, I barely deserve to be here. And, you know, I look at the other aspect, too, of they just had that fucking court case. So that's fucking a week of no training at all. You're training in your hotel room, you know, with no one around you, essentially. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, what, two weeks before your fight? A week before your oh, fight? The week of? The fight, exactly. Yeah. So you know that uh, that's not easy. No, regardless of who you are, to yep. having to deal with that bullshit a week before your fight, your second fight, big fight. You know, it, it's, that's some shit. But you know, I, I keep at it. I I hope he ends up somewhere. I hope he does something. But you know, fucking Joe Rogan even run his mouth. He's not a fighter. He's just not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's there because he, of his name. He's done pro wrestling since he was a fucking teenager. He, yeah. It's just, that's all he knows. He didn't even have amateur wrestling experience he, back in the well, day. He so. rolled a little bit, you know, apparently. You know, I thought it would be better. And now we have Daniel Bryan saying that he, he could do better <laughs> against Mike J- Jackson. And it's like, <laughs> dude, settle down. Um, keep running your mouth, though, because I love his Daniel Bryan. of like, I'll fucking beat you. I'll make him fucking tap out. My, like, you know, you go into his promo on SmackDown. That was awesome that's right. intensity i love the intensity and if, if it all if all it is is to just drum up people talking it, for sure why not what you gotta do especially if you're you're all about ground game and submission work you yeah. know like yeah fucking it's the right move please don't look too into it people he's just running his mouth plus also he has contracts coming up too like he get get, get, the, get those eyes on you is the ufc gonna sign him fuck no like no god no, <laughs> god, no. it's not even a fu- bellator is not even gonna fucking sign all right no, this no. isn't a fucking if daniel thought. bryan goes anywhere it's to new japan and ring of honor there, but you know he's he, to mexico it's just <laughs> That's one where of those he's things go. where he's just fucking if he, clawing saying doing whatever he can right now get all eyes on him get those fucking numbers up because he's he's money right now he's building that brand back up and it sounds like he's probably going to be done now so well fucking Dana White even said that yeah. Mike Jackson's not even going to fight in the UFC again so it's like well what the fuck you doing then dude <laughs> you fucking thought Mike Jackson's performance was dog shit clearly you thought CO Punk's was even worse none of these guys are going to fight in the UFC again yeah no yeah. Shit. Yeah. shit well now the question becomes where did what does CM Punk do now is he going to go back to New Japan and in the indie scene is he just not going to wrestle anymore is he going to do something else so I, I'd like to see him go back and do the indie thing. I think that would be really cool because they could use. I think he's gonna st- try out for the Cubs. I think he could, he could, <laughs> he could, he could, he could certainly try. Uh, fucking everyone's hiring him apparently. But uh, <laughs> fucking hook him up with Jeff Jarrett. Let's see where he ends up. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he's definitely not gonna go back to WWE anytime soon. A lot of people are speculating. Well, maybe he goes back because uh, because he won the case. He proved he was right. Like, God there's, no, there's a fucking way he's going back anytime <laughs> soon to WWE if ever if. I mean, that's a. This is a hard-headed son of a bitch, CM Punk. He's. I mean, I mean, yeah. Bret Hart went back eventually. Bruno San Martino went back eventually. So you never say never. But I mean, this is CM Punk. It's he's a different. A he's a different son cat. of a bitch. <laughs> it's no. So it's let no him be. Secret. I mean, he's got the right to let him and do back, his but thing. But it, it, it even sounds like he doesn't have the passion for wrestling anymore. Exactly. Uh, so. I was just saying, he's been doing it since he was a fucking teenager. And I, you know, I, me personally, I hope he stays with the MMA thing. I just not on a UFC. Not on scale. the big stage. I don't sure. even want to see on a Bellator scale. When oh, I Bill, see, Bellator would be happy to take uh, him in the paper. He's rise. such a big nerd. I see him going into the comic culture more, honestly. Oh, yeah. I he, see he him really, really ramping it. I think he'll ramp that up and go to that because that's something he's pretty passionate about. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, let's move on to some other news items. Adam Cole is going to be defending <laughs> the uh, the North American Championship at an Evolve show, Evolve 107, on June 24th. This guess is who? Guess who? indie show who? against who is he gonna face? fucking Walter. Who? Ooh. If you don't know who Walter is, he's like this giant... Go on YouTube and type in Walter. Put that, on your boner pants. Yeah, he's this giant German dude <laughs> who chops people... 
off the planet. He chops people until they're purple in the chest. Uh, he's that's a fucking monster. Pretty he's much beast. all he does. Uh, so that'll be fun. <laughs> Between yes. seeing Adam Cole on, e- on an Evolve show defending the North American Championship makes me wonder if his undisputed era teammates will be joining him to cause some skullduggery there uh, for that show, I wonder. Mm-hmm. Oh, that might be a possibility. Definitely, I think so. Skullduggery. Uh, and then also in the news, we and I forgot to m- bring this up on uh, Strong Honor, actually, but uh, Ring of Honor is rumored to be interested in doing a show at Madison Square Garden sometime in 2019. Now, the story here is that uh, Madison Square Garden has had a long-time relationship with WWE, and they've uh, kept other wrestling companies out of there. Other Even it took MMA a long time to get there, but that was mostly because of the, new, legislation the, the New York the Commission. Yeah, was... uh, but, I mean, they've kept other wrestling promotions out of MSG for a long time. But uh, now it's been rumored there's some Mexican promotions that are looking to run well, there. Well, because WWE keeps going to the Bar- what, State Barclay. The, yeah, Bar- so, the Barclays Center. MSG is like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're still running the occasional house show. I think they're doing uh, two a year or so at MSG, but none of the bigger shows. And it, uh, from what I've heard, it, it's, it's very expensive to run at MSG, not only the rent, but paying the, the union labor costs mm-hmm. there uh, and, and requiring to, to ha- have union workers uh, work on the production side of things is a big cost, and it's something that they don't like to pay, especially when they have their own I crew. I wouldn't either. I mean, don't get me wrong. I get the mystique of MSG, but yeah. that shit's old. <laughs> it's fucking old. It's cramped. I'm sure they've probably renovated it, you know, how God knows how right. many times, and it still can't keep up. It's like, honestly, going again, bring up the Cubs, the fucking Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field sucks if you go there. <laughs> it's like one of the it's worst history, ballparks. Though, like, it looks amazing, yes, but it's one of the worst ballparks to go to. So it's like, I wouldn't want to run there either. I want to put it on a new, shinier stadium, a new <laughs> arena. Like, why go to MSG and pay more when I can just go hop well, on over to Brooklyn? If you're yep. going to do the work to pay the money to do a house show, why not just do a fucking a pay-per-view or a good Raw or you know a good event out of there? Well, it sounds like uh, if Ring of Honor is going to do it, it sounds like the WrestleMania weekend because it's in New York next year. Oh, sure. uh, that would be the place to do it or uh, the time to do it rather because you're going to have the, the you know everybody from around the world there for WrestleMania. So it, it would be easy to uh, to pack that building in that situation. To, to to refer to them, but you know, it comes to a point where Ring of Honor also has to go all in too. Right. Well, and uh, certainly they could co-promote something with New Japan, who's mm-hmm. talked to. I mean, there's been rumors of of not not as hard as this Ring of Honor one, but I mean, people have talked about why doesn't New Japan run someplace like a uh, a Madison Square yeah. Garden in, in New York? So uh, that's definitely a possibility. So well, right. I think look there was another. There was another. I think might have been CMLL or AAA, but one of those yeah. is looking to run a show at MSG yep. too yep. now yep. That well. was something I mentioned yeah, in there too. Like WrestleMania weekend too, like, you know, especially this year, like, we're talking about Joey Janela spring break <laughs> and the blood <laughs> sport and just the oddball crazy shit. How come we're not, we were even talking about Lucha Underground and Impact, but not a whisper about Ring of Honor. <laughs> you know, it's just like, come on, you guys, like, you gotta step up. Yep, for sure. All right, let's uh, let's move along before we get to our predictions. We didn't do any pet peeves uh, last week, but we got a couple of little gripes this week. But and I think a little bit of a, a differences in our pet peeves a little bit. Sit, Ubu, sit. Pet peeves. Good dog. Uh, Taco and I are not fans of arguing on ladders, and that was the opening scene for Monday Night Raw. Now. Uh, in their own defense, I think they were trying to recreate from, uh, was it last year or two years ago, when they basically did the same thing, but it was the famous shot of Jericho sitting cross-legged mm-hmm. on top of a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He got, kept getting added to different shit that he was sitting on. Like, it was right. Great Wall of China. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> So uh, that was kind of a, a, a fun scene from either a year or two ago uh, from the Money in the Bank build-up. Uh-huh. So I think they were trying to recreate that. But, Joe, I, and so it was obnoxious and it felt very contrived. But, Joe, I know you had some moments that you liked out of it. I just thought, <laughs> I, I found it entertaining. It was the people that was on the ladder. It's not just the, like, again, yeah. <laughs> arguing on ladders is kind of fun. You know, it, it is what it is. But you've got Kevin Owens up there, one of the best on the mic. you got Braun Strowman having fun. And, again, I like the fact that the women's Money in the Bank challengers are interacting with the men's exactly. Money in the Bank challengers. They're working with each other. And, again, Braun and Kevin are fighting. Alexa Bliss 
screams to stop him just to get it to <laughs> stop. <laughs> you know, I just I found that entertaining. Yep, yep. You know what I did find annoying in this sense is the fact that we went to commercial and came back and had to sit through Alexa Bliss's entrance again. Why? <laughs> she was already out there. She talked for God's sakes. Yeah, there was that too. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up uh, the obstacle course from uh, <laughs> that Lashley had to go through. Talk about that one, Joe. This I don't. <laughs> the thing is, you could have an awesome feud between these two. Bobby Lashley. I love Bobby Lashley's attitude since he's coming back. Since he's come back, he's just having fun. He's having. He's throwing dudes around. Having these, you know, okay Ooh, matches. <laughs> and Sami Zayn again. He's been killing it on the mic. But this whole, you got the sisters. <laughs> act you know like a couple weeks ago sister act yeah exactly so i said it uh and then the fucking <laughs> obstacle course this was week. it was it three sisters yeah Triple yup. <laughs> <laughs> but then he got him doing the stupid obstacle course and attacking him at the end you know good heel move getting the heat going into money in the bank but we Sammy, wow, wow. so <laughs> much better with these two See, yeah like if you look at this feud starting like now and do the WWE thing where they like, oh, did we do that? No, we didn't. Forget about that. Just do that with the sister thing. Think about it starting now. D- Sammy Wow Wow's challenging fucking, uh, what's his face? Sammy Wow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, show <laughs> off his strengths. Oh, you're a military guy? Bring it. Let me show what, what you got. You know, I, I like the peacocking aspect of it. And it was a really nice way to, uh, to kind of showcase Lashley as a fucking just, like a, instead of doing a quick, you know, video package of, hey, this is me, this is my background. Nah, just fucking show him off in a quick, what? He fucking smiling the whole smiling time. Smiling the whole fucking <laughs> time like just it was fucking, like 38 I, seconds i wasn't too mad at this segment it's just we have that fucking sister shit in the back of our head and the whole yeah. point of this fucking started over a fucking stupid hat in the first place <laughs> it, 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 that's what started the feud i can't get over that Sammy, wow, wow. so you know I, I do like to look at it like now i'm not too mad that they did this obstacle course it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing they've ever fucking done oh, with anybody not. and uh i just uh yeah let's Hopefully, get a good match out of these two on Sunday. That's what I'm really looking yeah, forward to. Yeah, I mean to. that that should be pretty good. Because, so. like I said, it was just a, it was it was a good way to showcase Lashley without having him to do a, a, a jobber match against a fucking no name that we're kind of sick of seeing. You're like, I don't need to see that. I would off. love to see this. Bobby Lashley squash match. So see, you see his moves, his signature offense. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> Joe. Did you, did you have another point? the obstacle course? Now was it built <laughs> specifically for that ring, the way it was designed, or is that something they just they just <laughs> rented? Because if they built that, they need to keep that shit for future. Like have like challenges oh, yeah, with the wrestlers, you know, and stuff like that. Call have the, them challenge each the other. Lashley challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How fast can you get the Lashley challenge done? Do uh, keep that slow. Your face, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that took a sharp turn. All right, let's. Uh, so, hey, let's... fucking pussy means I'm cool with you in like England. I guess I've been watching a lot of Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> that means that you're probably wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is screaming at us right now. Uh, let's change it up. Let's uh, let's get right into our money in the bank predictions now, shall we? <laughs> Uh, all right. Last week was Riverdale. <laughs> this week it's Fresno Bellman. Watch your fucking wrestling taco. I'm just I'm just waiting for you to slip the C one in there because you've been doing it off the off the air oh. all day. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, since we were, Carl, cool. Since, since we were just Connecticut. Since if we my were Chris, wife says it's okay. Am I allowed to say that, Captain? Uh, you're going to have to defer and ask the internet on this one. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be cool. Correct. Cool, cool with it. All right. Let's start with the match we were just talking about. Bobby Lashley versus uh, Sami Zayn. Very crash. Uh, who's uh, <laughs> what's your prediction for this one, Taco? Uh, you know it's gonna be fucking Sami Zayn's gonna fucking squash him. No, <laughs> <laughs> thirty seconds. Yeah, we're gonna get a pretty uh, pretty quick Lashley win out of this one. I, I, I Sammy Wow Wow. Hope they give him some time, but I, I expect Lashley pretty quick. Yeah, with eleven matches on this show, and uh, uh, this is gonna be a really long fucking show. I kind of hope it is. I, I think Lashley's winning, and I think it's gonna be quick. And I kind of hope yeah. it is. Uh, I can't said. disagree. Like this, this one's just 
it sucks to say, you know, say, they just got nothing for Sami Zayn right now, and there's no reason not to build up Bobby Lashley since he's came back. So, you know. It's very bituminous right now. Mm, very. Yeah. It's an obsidian type thing. Looking for the big <laughs> Bob Lashley uh, push here. Uh, but, yeah, these two, I'm sure they could put on a really interesting, good match, but I do, I'm just, with the time Maybe we can get something down the road again with these two, but, like, they're just kind of rushing through this one. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath, so uh, I guess we'll see. Big Cass versus. Daniel Bryan. Uh, Daniel Bryan already won a match against Big Cass, made him tap out, cut a hell of a promo uh, selfie style a couple of weeks ago, and they uh, played it on this week's SmackDown. Just intense talking shit. Mm -hmm. Do you you think you're going to break my leg? You you don't even know how to break my (laughs) leg. I'm going to make your ass tap out again, motherfucker. And you can't teach that. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I loved that. Uh, We had Big Cass cutting his uh, his uh, cheese. His uh, what do you his, his the carnival height limit uh, carnival promo? Oh, I actually yeah. did not. I didn't hate that honestly. <laughs> it, I mean, it, for for what it was supposed to be, something that you're not supposed to like, and something that's supposed to put heat on Cass, it worked for me. They cut him in his fucking. He's wearing his his stupid suit, and he's got yeah, his, his awesome. fucking dimple sticking in there. His shitty dimple and his shitty facial hair. <laughs> I'm like this guy's just shitty, and so, <laughs> so uh, it's fun to cheer against a big Cass. So he's in the right role. In that oh, respect, yeah, right. I'm rooting for Daniel Bryan. Who's not? Uh, I'm going to pick him, even though he already won and will probably lose. But, uh, Joe, what's your prediction on this? <laughs> See, and I'm more confident than you. I think Daniel Bryan makes him tap again. There, I think this was just a terrible idea <laughs> from the beginning, doing Cass against Daniel Bryan, doing this whole big guy versus little guy gimmick. It's not working for me. Y- we're getting good experience out of Cass. Like, we're seeing what he could be as a good heel. But Daniel Bryan is just so damn over. There's no stopping him. And he's a hell of a fucking wrestler. So I think Daniel Bryan's going to win, and confidently, you know, he's going to make him tap. Well, and to go back to our earlier seg- segment. Pet peeves. Good dog. Daniel Bryan is retired out of the sport for or the sports entertainment, out of the business for how many years? You come back and you put him in a feud with big fucking Cass? So there's I'm that. Not, I'm not mad at it. it, it, it you know, because he was always such a case by case by case basis of him trying to get approved, 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 and finally was like, okay, it's like, I what? <laughs> this is happening? Like, yeah, whoa, okay. So it's just you know getting him back in there, getting him in the grind. We know he's fucking ready for it and everything, but it's getting Cass back out there, him back in the grind. What better way? What better person than Daniel Bryan? You know, it's just good. It's good for mostly Cass, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But it's also not something that we're seeing weekly shoved down our fucking throats. I mean, Christ, we just had Daniel Bryan lose to Rusev, or was it Joe Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe? We had him lose to Samoa Joe a couple weeks ago, and people were Samoa pissed about Joe. that. Samoa. <laughs> I, it was like I wasn't pissed at that move. I, I, that's awesome. We we can we, we. It's still clear to us that Dan O'Brien, you know, is a fucking person because all of us want us to fucking have him go in cheat code video game mode and just steamroll through fucking everybody <laughs> and have the championship on him and it's right where we work years ago. No, no, no. Let's fucking real world this. I, I like him fucking just being fucking pissed, getting that intensity, slowly building it up. Like I really hope this fucking Sunday we just the only thing we hear out of D- Dan O'Brien is just, ah! And just him fucking <laughs> chopping cast down, submitting his fucking ass, steamroll him fucking right to the back again. I wish Absolutely. It, it, it's just one of those things, it's like, I'm giving WWE too much benefit of the doubt or, about it, but it, it's, don't throw him fucking right in there, like, right away and be like, oh, what we're gonna in everything out of him. No, fucking wrap up this AJ fucking Nakamura shit. Wrap up what other things you got going. Yo, fucking B, finally we're making Rusev look strong. What do you want, fucking <laughs> Daniel Bryan pinning Rusev? Is that what you want? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction then, Taco? <laughs> like I said, I hope fucking Dan O'Brien just fucking kicks his ass down, steamrolls <laughs> him, wish, in, out, done. I wish they would have done like a Kurt Angle style thing. Maybe not the same exact thing, but just have Dan O'Brien slowly just from bottom to the top, just start working his way through I mean, it doesn't roster. get much more bottom than Big Cass, so... Sin Cara. <laughs> like, I've got two words. Like, Sin Cara. <laughs> How great is it, too? Because it's like we're not really getting fucking, you know, like I said, Dan O'Brien and Big Cass shoved down our throats Keep on a weekly basis. It. How many fucking people have we seen Dan O'Brien wrestle already? That's true. We've yeah. gotten a couple That's pretty awesome. good matches. Like, yeah. he's just fucking... He's just, you know... 
chilling back, fucking, I feel like doing like the Daniel Bryan World Tour, the WWE right now. Hey, I want to be number one, and I want to leave number tw- uh, fucking 49 out of that fucking Royal Rumble thing you guys are doing overseas. Let's do that. I want everybody, I want my hands to face every fucking WWE competitor I can right now. That's exactly what he's doing. Money in the Bank <laughs> coming up this Sunday is from Chicago. We have a match here featuring Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal. They teased it happening on Monday Night Raw. They thought maybe we thought maybe we don't want to put that in front of Chicago. We'll do it here in Memphis or wherever the fuck we are. Uh, they did not do that. They teased it. It was Sunil Singh instead, uh, and Reigns getting that victory there. So now they are really? going to go on with this in Chicago. Reigns versus Mahal. <laughs> uh, who is the crowd going to be behind, or are they just going to boo, or will it be CM Punk chants throughout? Oh. Uh, and oh, uh, <laughs> damn, why did you fucking remind? me uh yeah i don't know i mean i'm, I'm gonna pick roman reigns here but uh <laughs> the spectacle of what's going to happen uh, with the crowd in this match is what's most intriguing here because i mean they what if they just start outright, perfect. outright cheer for gender this is the greatest way ever to get gender over put him in there with roman reigns in front in of chicago. chicago he's gonna be the biggest baby face on the show next to daniel bryan it's really oh god is chicago really gonna cheer for gender though <laughs> i i fucking hope <laughs> Hope so, because <laughs> I'm. Here's my prediction. I'm picking Mahal over no. Reigns. <laughs> Word, bitch. Gender like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I want Mahal to win this match Me so too, bad. Man. Dead center of the fucking ring. Imagine the cheer he gets. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> then that music comes on and everybody's rapping along. Like, <laughs> I don't know the words. <laughs> Look up the translation. Actually, really fucking awesome. <laughs> right on. There you go. Oh, there's a homework project you go, for you. you. Go. All right, so you guys are picking Mahal. I'm mm-hmm. picking Reigns. Good to know Rain there. All right, now let's get into some uh, so, some of the uh, title matches on the show. The B team is taking on the Deleters of Worlds <laughs> for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, uh, I just want you guys to realize that this one isn't on the pre-show. This is on the main card. The B stands for <laughs> Best. Uh, I'm thinking the deleters are taking this one despite the huge push the B team has been getting on Monday Night Raw, winning that battle royal and defeating Rhino and Slater this week on oh, Monday man, Night that Raw. That was a hell of a win. Oh, what a win for the B team. Huge push. Huge. I will say this. Hey, where are the authors you of seen, pain, Did you by see the, the victory lap? <laughs> did you see the victory lap? I didn't, no. He picks up uh, fucking Ha Ha Clinton Dicks. <laughs> Bo Dallas picks up uh, Who's the other B team member uh, uh, um, Curtis Axel. Axel Curtis Axel picks him up on his shoulders And then they did a victory lap yes. I want that to come back I missed a good chunk of uh, Raw Because this week, sidebar real quick I've been trying the Direct TV Now uh, <laughs> Cable app And I got pretty fucking fast internet And this shit was like mm. Go to that! Be sour. <laughs> we're not, not going to load anything. And, oh, yeah, you recorded raw. No fast forward. Fuck that shit. We're not about it. So, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not on the direct TV now. I'm still on the sling side. Back to sling, huh? Yep, yep, yep. yep I hear that. I got uh, the Sony View left that I'm, I'm willing to try. Can you try so. that one next? We'll see how that one rolls out. Cool, cool. Did you make your pick there here for this one? B team or deleters of worlds? Huge push God for the B team. Damn. You know. Where are the authors of pain? I can't find them with the fucking search. Ooh, where line. the fuck is sanity? Who? That's where's, SmackDown, that's dog. SmackDown, but yeah. yeah. Where is sanity? Where the fuck is sanity? I'm going B team. Fuck it. B team for Taco. <laughs> I got two things. One, are they going to acknowledge that Bray and Bo are brothers? And two, Ooh. like how awesome is that face off going to be? Yeah, right. Like I, <laughs> I, again, I I was talking with my coworker Dave, our number one fan, <laughs> um, about the, the fact that. We didn't get a face off. Like we got them on the stage. Like I wanted to see Bray Wyatt staring at Bo Dallas, <laughs> like a like a fucking John Travolta Nick Cage face off. Like, yeah, Whoa, what a predicament. Exactly. <laughs> but we're going with my prediction. 
I'm going to leader of worlds. Taco, what's your prediction there? Dude, I fucking said oh, BT. Fucking God listen, damn, God. God. What the fuck is this <laughs> well, okay, You know what it was? B team is getting this huge, the, the B team push is so huge that it blinded me to your prediction. So I thought it was such, it's such a natural you know, prediction. You're still thinking about the beans, aren't you? Because they're getting such a huge push. Of course they're going to win. It's the net, most natural prediction you that can make. Bo- but yeah, they're the fucking potato they fed salad. everyone. Yeah, potato salad, potato <laughs> salad. Sorry, fucking. And IHOP has me all fucked up with my B's and my P's. <laughs> Seth Rollins versus Elias for the Intercontinental Ooh. Championship. Uh, that guitar was awesome. Yeah. Seth John Mayer me. gave it to him. Yeah, and he busted it right over him. Fuck that, that John Mayer bullshit guitar. Uh, yeah, Seth, uh, Seth Rollins has been on a really nice run, having some good matches uh, on Monday Night Raw. He's been Monday Night Rollins. Uh, yeah. I'm enjoying the push. I'm hoping he gets the win here. That's my prediction for Seth Rollins. <laughs> Taco, who you got here? I'm hoping this match gets some time. Me too. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of potential in this match, and Elias is one of those guys well, that always fucking steps up. Well, the, the, the thing here, too, I mean, th- there's a bit of a theme on this show, too, with uh, Big Cass versus Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins versus Elias, Carmella versus Asuka, uh, uh, Nia and... and, uh, and, and uh, Ronda Rousey. Lady Taco. And uh, Lady Taco, <laughs> yeah. Oops. Ah, shit, the whole thing went away. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 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 what was I saying here? And the, the theme with all, all, all those matches is really good, exp- except for Naya and, 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 uh, and Lady Taco, of course, uh, <laughs> is, is, is experienced good wrestler versus not so good wrestler. Uh, to me, Elias is unproven in the ring. He's okay. He's had okay matches, but mm. nothing's ever been like, oh my God, what a match. He's never had like a, a moment where it was like, wow, that was a hell of a match. That He's, doesn't really happen in WWE either. It, it, not as much as it, it could, <laughs> but certainly. I, saying, I, ho- I hope they give this match time. I hope they give him a chance because what better person to fucking get that spot out of them? Lady Taco. Lady Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Taco. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying for uh, for uh, Sami Zayn to keep keep his momentum going here. You mean Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sammy Wow Wow. <laughs> I'm all fucked up over here. Sammy Wow Wow, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. I want Seth Rollins. That's my pick. Uh, they fucking both have noses. They. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your pick in there this time, Taco? I didn't even pick. I don't attention. fucking know. Who's your I'm pick? I'm going Rollins. I'm going to be rooting for Elias on this one, though. Yeah, that's what I was actually going to say myself. <laughs> I'm just like, I wouldn't be mad if Elias won. Really? I'm, I, I'm picking Seth Rollins to win, but I wouldn't be mad with Elias winning. He's just that he's that honky-tonk man kind of champion. Oh, man. Like I, I, just, I will compare him to that just because of the music I'm, aspect. But I'm I, surprised, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but... You son of a bitch. I, I'm surprised you guys are okay with Elias. Because like, coming off of that Miz run, I am just ready for something different in the IC picture. And Elias feels like more of the same of the Miz thing. I, I, the I just, and the I am bullshit. so on Elias right now because it's just... I love Love the dude's work ethic. Like every fucking podcast he's on, I'm just like, God damn, I get more and more impressed with this fucking dude. Like that That's shit during point. WrestleMania weekend, him just fucking showing up to some random bar and doing a random show. It's like, dude, that's like Fuck! Like so much work in your character, I love it. Like details like that, I can't, I can't appreciate it anymore. Do I want Seth Rollins? I have a fucking amazing run up with the Intercontinental Championship. You know, especially after that Miz run. Yeah, fuck it. Rollins is so perfect. He's the man right now. He he is Ross champion, and he's fucking proud of it. And we're proud of him. Would I be mad with Elias being a fucking dickhead with that championship every week on Raw? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he's again like the Rick Rude. And Ted DiBiase style, you know, like asshole, like I'm flaunting the belt every week, and you got to listen to me perform. But here's Fuck the thing: you. if fucking Sunday comes along and they get a good 15, you know, minute match out of it, uh, Rollins and Elias, and Elias just looks like dog shit, I'm gonna look like a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like, gonna, look, we're like gonna look like an asshole. But you know, it's just like uh, no, I'm I'm Team Elias. The dude has just such a good fucking work drive and work ethic, and his head's in the right space, and he's doing all the right fucking moves. And obviously he's fucking making a lot of the right people small in the back right now because he's getting a lot of fucking TV time for a guy yeah. who's just kind of drifting around on NXT. But I get it. Uh, <laughs> for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, Anderson Gal Anderson and Gallows versus the Brothers. <laughs> on the pre-show. 
Oh, yeah. pre-show, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can, they, they, they've only allotted five hours for the show, so we got to put these guys <laughs> on the two-hour pre-show. Uh, <laughs> but only give them like four minutes. Only four minutes, of course, yeah. They'll, I'm sure they'll win it. The Bludgeon Brothers will probably win in a squash again because that's the push that they've been getting right now. Bludgeon Brothers are getting that big B-team style push right now over there on SmackDown. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of what they've been doing with the Bludgeons right now is not entertaining, quick matches. Uh, although I do I do get a kick out of uh, Harper smacking the shit out of Rowan <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, as part of their own he offense. He actually, uh, again, broke his Twitter thing asking if uh, Carl... If his hot Asian wife is going to show up to the <laughs> pay per view, <laughs> nice. Uh, Which uh, did you guys? Either you guys watched that uh, Luke uh, Harper uh, thing didn't. WWE released about him and no. his backgrounds and him coming up as Brody and things. even yeah, it was, it was good. It was I think only ten minutes long or something like is that. Is that a but, thing uh, on the network or is that like a YouTube deal? It was like a WWE dot com okay. or maybe YouTube thing or whatever. Sure, he sure, he sure. posted it or whatever, but yeah, he was uh, he's like I'm just like super proud of my background and everything. It's actually him talking about him and his family and his kid and where he got the Brody name from in the Indies and where he started and everything. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's super fucking awesome. I, I really liked it. It was kind of something I wish we would have got on Harper sooner. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to check that out for sure. Well, what's your predictions on this one then? Budget Brothers. God, after seeing fucking Harrison's abs, I wish I was a hot Asian wife, but I'm going Bludgeon Brothers. <laughs> Bludgeon Brothers! <laughs> Liquefied human mermaids. Uh, I fucking love these guys. I don't give a fuck what you guys say. I love this shit. For the SmackDown Women's Championship, Carmella defends against Asuka. Uh, Carmella is the be- she's she's the best. She beat Charlotte twice. Charlotte beat Asuka, so she's twice as good as as, as Charlotte and Oscar. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, that math adds up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how many times could they fucking say that on, on SmackDown, by the way? I love it because fucking MMA people do this shit all the time. Like, well, this guy beat this guy. So if if this guy beats this guy, they could face each other for the championships. But he's clearly going to win because he beat this guy. Sit, Ubu, oh, sit. God, no. I love it. Fuck it. It's... One of the most stupidest thing people <laughs> fucking say when it comes to that shit. So I'm glad she's doing it. Like, oh, I fucking beat this person twice. I'm the best. It's like, yeah, we you didn't beat this lady though. Like, <laughs> you got a real challenge ahead of you. <laughs> well, I'm convinced. I'm, I'm convinced because. Uh, Carmella tapped out to Oscar in the historic 10 woman tag oh, on SmackDown. Story. First time ever 10 woman tag on SmackDown Live. It's funny that uh, tag a lot of me. But uh, si- <laughs> since Carmella <laughs> since Carmella tapped out clean to Oscar, that's better than the C word. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear no, it. No, you don't need to hear it. Okay, I won't rewind or anything or or edit. Uh, <laughs> since Carmella tapped out clean to Oscar in the historic 10 woman tag, I'm predicting so many. Dis- Distractions. Distractions. Oh, Too many distractions. And skullduggery. Skullduggery. Uh, that, that Carmella is somehow going to retain here. That's my prediction. Joe, what do you got in this one? I got Asuka winning, but by disqualification. Oh. So Carmella ends up keeping the title. I heard the worst rumor. I don't. I, I really hope this doesn't happen, but there has been talks of James Ellsworth. I have seen that, oh, too. <laughs> I, I don't want that. Talk I still, about skullduggery. I still feel it will be a DQ but I, with Asuka winning, but she keeps that title taco oh god damn um <laughs> man like you know for real what does that mean uh <laughs> i'm going uh mella on this one just keep the strap on her keep her running her mouth uh money in the bank there's so much fucking going on right now Asuka winning that uh the championship there would kind of just be an underthought Nia Jax versus... God, see, this is the fun thing about Money in the Bank, though. Is <laughs> when is the Money in the Bank going to happen? Because if, you know, the f- woman wins at the beginning of the show, who's to say they ain't just going to be like, hey, Cash Carp- in before Mella the had this over. thing for a fucking year. Let's uh, just not do this with a woman again this year and just fucking wrap that up. Let her fucking get the first woman to win on the pay-per-view that night. A new woman's first. Yeah, match order might be uh, might play into what happens mm-hmm. there, too. So, for yeah, sure. if someone... That, I just got the weirdest feeling because... WWE is trying to make this one of the like a big five. They're trying to turn it from the big four to the big five with money in the bank. I, I feel like we could get a surprise. Show you a big five. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> wait, what? I'm, <laughs> <Yeah. Shush! laughs> I'm I'm going to say Mella retains 
Unless they started off with the woman's money in the bank, then I think the winner will win that night. Mella equals money. All right, moving on. <laughs> Nia Jax defending the Raw Women's Championship versus Ronda Rousey. She's a baby face. She's a heel. She's not a bully. She is a bully. She stands up for she bullies' rights. She wasn't a fucking bully from the beginning, she, bitches. She is a big bully. Ronda Rousey's mad. She's happy. She's mad. She's happy. Uh, <laughs> this could be. This has been fun. Because you're black. You're white. You know what? <laughs> this, this, could be, this could be really bad. This could be really good. Hard to say. We need more Michael Jax on this show. Nia, yeah, ja- do. Nia Jax can be a shit show. Sometimes <laughs> she can be interesting or, 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 you know, or powerful. I have no idea. I mean, it, or irresistible. What makes or <laughs> 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 <Or> a force? <laughs> 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 How you doing? Uh, so, but she ain't rowdy. Here's the thing. I, 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 I'm. Could this thing just be <laughs> Ronda Rousey just getting her in an armbar immediately? Quick, and, one and done. Yeah, in and out, like ten seconds. <laughs> that's 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 my Ronda Rousey gets the championship in like a thirty second match tops. Wow, Taco. It shows you how confident we are in this match. Right oh, now. It's, it's oh god, no shit it, show. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love the fact that Nia's the one that challenged Ronda Rousey right off the bat because yeah, we know that she's the bass one on the block. God damn it! Um, I kind of retract what I say earlier and kind of think that the Raw woman might win and just <laughs> 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 see. That's one thing I don't like about this year's Money in the Bank. I don't like that they keep reiterating that. I like the fact that if you win Money in the Bank. You cash in. You can cash in on either brand. Just go who after whatever champion you want, as long as it's a championship. I no, no. I like that they keep it separate like that. Like you, you're, you're fucking wrong. You're walking in <laughs> and you're rep- representing your brand. I like that they keep it separate for the Royal Rumble. You know what I like? like? The Rumble winner can choose where the fuck they want to go. I like the turd burglars. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> that's my choice. So, so Tacos is predicting the same outcome as the other <laughs> women's title match. Uh, Joe, what is your prediction? Yeah, I think Bella's going to win this one. I think Nia Jax is going to win this match. It's. It, I'm not saying it's going to be competitive, but and I hope it's short. But I think she squashes. What Ronda if it's Rousey. a ten minute squash match? Nia Jax dominates and wins. Mm. I'm not. I, I mean, I'm probably going to be in the bathroom. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it depends on what you have to do. Number one or number two. I got. Do you it. have to take an Oni Larkin or do you have to take a Danny Birch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ha- I have to da- take a, a B. <laughs> I mean B. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I am. The B stands for best. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, let's let's <laughs> hold on. There, okay, so there is a, there's, we're spending more time on this fucking match trying not to talk about the match. <laughs> so hold on, there is, there is a chance because Ronda Rousey had a really great performance at WrestleMania. Granted, she was in there with some a, a lot of great talent and had three a, legends and had a lot of time to prepare for the match, a lot of time to practice the match. This time, not probably not any time to practice. Practice or not a lot anyway, uh, but I mean she had a really good performance there. So there's a chance that this could be better than advertised or better than it looks. I, I can be positive for the ladies, yes. <laughs> for the WWE Championship, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura in a last man standing match. This because it's a stipulation match in the WWE means that uh, this matchup is now. <laughs> so and more nut shots and and you're gonna have to bring back Dario because Lucha's starting. I know, to I know. I, 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 I love Shane, but I, I miss I miss the Dario one. I so do too. We'll, we'll bring that one back. I think for next week. Awesome. Uh, but uh, speaking of Lucha Underground, since you brought it up, mm-hmm. obviously uh, we record on Wednesdays. This show drops early on Thursdays, so uh, we did not watch Lucha Underground this week. The return, but uh, we'll bring Between it. Dominion and predictions. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 bring it up next week. We'll definitely talk a little Lucha Underground. Well, and Lucha's one of those ones, I mean, it's 
pre-recorded, you know, yeah. way ahead of time. It's not a bad one we could do, you know, next People week. are good about spoilers on Lucha, though, unless you really dig for them. Yeah, and it's one of those things, too, where we don't need to talk about the whole thing and break it down. We can just, if there's some cool shit going on, we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we, kind of, we talk about the best. So The any, best. Correct. Hashtag the best. Anyway, so. The B stands for... <laughs> Best. Yeah, Hashtag the past. A- oh, wait. A- <laughs> AJ Nakamura, last man standing, WWE title. Does Nakamura finally take that title off of AJ, or uh, does AJ finally defeat Nakamura and move on to bigger and better things? Mm. It's really tough to pick. It's, this is a hard pick here. I uh, I want to stick with AJ. I just, I just, I, 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 I like his momentum. I like him on top of the SmackDown brand. It'd be kind of a quote, feel good story for Nakamura, but him and his heel role i feel like he could go around the roster do some other things well and they're already hinting at it because they had the jeff hardy nakamura match this yeah week that he i mean he could easily j- jump into that united states uh title run as well yeah yeah absolutely uh yeah keep keep the strap on aj he's having a um a good run with it now and well, I, I think know, he needs fucking, to hold it till SummerSlam at least. It was like I just, God damn it! It's just like that that that, that Hardy Nakamura match on SmackDown. It it, it was hard because it's like it was a good fucking match. Something it was like, oh yeah, this is great, fun, you know, awesome. Boom, Nakamura low blow. It's like, oh man, like <laughs> I know that's Nakamura's thing, and I'm like I'm liking it because it's Nakamura doing it. He does it in such a fucking cheeky. <laughs> ah, you guys thought I was gonna say it. <laughs> he does it in such a you know Nakamura way, but. Uh, God, it just it just instantly was like mm, boner kill. SoCal does it better. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see you. <laughs> all right, so we're all sticking with AJ on this. AJ, one. All right. yeah. All and, right. Um, uh, 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 to go back to the Daniel Bryan thing, though, you know, they, 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 that's a match that they never they never got to finish. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. Whether it's for the strap or not, it's I want to see those guys back at it again. But I mean, it's Absolutely. vice versa. If if Nakamura wins the title, I mean, something for Daniel Bryan to go after. Oh, yeah. That'd be a hell of a deal too. So plus, you know, um, just fucking off the top of my head right now, though, we got SummerSlam around the corner. Though, he, he, if you want Daniel Bryan to be in a big title spot or a big big pitcher, why would you? Why? Wh- why would you blow your load now? Why not do it, you know, <laughs> towards like a SummerSlam era? Well, and the other thing too is there's one more pay per view between SummerSlam and uh, 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 Extreme Fools. Well, yeah, Extreme Rule. That's what I was trying to get to. Extreme Rules <laughs> is the next WWE pay per view in uh, in July now already. So, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, July, straight, July, yeah, yeah, July fifteenth. They have a, a, a the next to the Ding Ding match. Right, exactly. So they could they could come back to this again. Uh, so I mean, yeah, the rematch. I need to break it up a little bit. But I think I think they I think I really think they need to be done with this here. I mean, you're going to stretch this out another month and a half. God, I hope not. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm whatever. <laughs> The yes. women, women's Money in the Bank ladder match for this uh, briefcase, of course. Charlotte versus Ember Moon versus Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Naomi, Lana, Natalia, and Sasha Banks. Really, it's it's a tough decision here. There's a lot of good options. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Charlotte having the nice run with the SmackDown Championship. Ember Moon just getting called up. It's different, it's different though when baby faces hold it though. I think they prefer, and I think it's it's a, a more natural story to tell if a heel holds the holds the briefcase because then you got the the run in potential after the baby faces baby face champion has been beat down. But that's if you have a baby face champion. So there's that because right now you've got Carmella with the championship. That's a heel. Nia's with the championship right now. She's a heel, but you could easily switch to uh, to Ronda Rousey on that side of things. So it could really go either way here. Uh, Alexa Bliss, who had the championship run already, uh, that's a possibility. Becky Lynch, I think, is a nice underdog story here where she had the SmackDown Women's Championship. She was the first one ever, but she's been just down groveling on the bottom ever since losing mm-hmm. that pretty much. And she's had a nice little redemption story the last couple of weeks with her beating Charlotte last week and I thought uh, for the the women's summit thing that they did at the beginning of Smackdown this week for as crappy as that was I thought Becky Lynch had a nice promo uh, in in that opening segment so would you say it was straight fire uh yeah uh Naomi is another good story in that and she wasn't too bad in the yeah she wasn't that great either and (laughs) and I did get a kick out of uh the Iconics coming out and making fun of the uh, Naomi and Lana dance-off uh 
Uh, <laughs> that was kind of neat. I love anything the Iconics do. Oh, I, people are not digging them on main roster. No, that, they're not. That's the thing is they're they're good at what they do, but what they do is so annoying. It's like it's amazing. It's go away heat for a lot of people. It's like fuck off already. I love Billy. So yeah, and then uh, Natalia, who's there? I don't think she's. I don't think she's getting the briefcase. And Sasha Banks, maybe she's over, but she's got the thing with Bailey that, that seems to be never ending. And also, uh, sometimes they forget about it. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes they're fighting. Sometimes they're best friends. Uh, so mm. there's all of that. Um, and Bailey has got her ass whooped by a riot to the squad. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. And there was that. Uh, so, I don't, man, I like I like Becky Lynch with the case, but she's on SmackDown, and it's probably yeah, Carmella. Yeah, See, almost that's... like uh, 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 Becky Lynch and Charlotte fighting each other for the summer for that SummerSlam spot. Yeah, I like that too. That, you know, it's like as much as like uh, I like you know like to me, uh, I ideally Becky Lynch climbing that ladder, winning that championship to fucking kick it off. Uh, you know that's just gonna set the night such in a good positive way. Becky Lynch with the the fucking. You're convinced case. this is the first match of the show. I uh, got <laughs> it. It just really feels like it. You know, it's got to be a ladder match to start the night off. But uh, it's I mean, at least early. You know, first or second match, it's gonna be. It's got to be. <laughs> and, and, you know, this is what I'm saying, though. Know, if Becky Lynch, you know, like, was to climb the ladder and actually win that briefcase in that Chicago crowd, they're going to back her up. They're going to fucking pop. And, and if it does get to a point where she runs out later in the night for that championship match and pins either Asuka or, 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 uh, uh, or Mella, you know, that fucking crowd's going to lose her shit. It, it, you know, that's ideally, you know, if you're going to do the baby face cash in the briefcase and if you still want to do the woman's first, like <coughs> WWE. He likes to do. There's your woman's first for the money in the bank at a pay per view. Is a woman cashing in first time ever at a pay per view? Like you know how they do their fucking fun facts. Yeah, yeah. Their snapple facts. <laughs> 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 so you know that's kind of why I'm convinced at the beginning. But I, I I love the idea more of Charlotte and Becky Lynch being at each other all like summer too, long. Yeah. In you know not in a heel you know versus face fashion. These two ladies can be faces all summer long and but who's gonna... still have a friendly competition with yeah. each other. And it's be you know we can even get you know the the dreaded triple threat match at you know with those two and Oscar at SummerSlam or something along those lines so they you know they, they they can paint themselves in a really good uh situation here it's just who the fuck's gonna walk out with it <laughs> so are you making that your official pick then becky lynch becky, oh god you know no no <laughs> no i'm going to go with naomi okay joe what are your thoughts all right i'm gonna throw this out there i'm gonna change my ronda rousey nia Jax. i had nia Jax. <laughs> i'm gonna pick ronda rousey okay I got Natalia winning cashing that briefcase and cashing in on Ronda Rousey. That would be fun. That I really like idea. that idea. I was thinking about that, like just with that friendship. Uh, you know, again, most likely I see Natalia's leg, you know, somehow getting re injured or, you know, taking her out of the match towards the end. But I really would like to see someone like a Natalia, a Naomi, again, someone upstart, whether it be babyface or heel. I want to see someone. Like, like the retro recommendation we're gonna bring up. CM Punk won that, and he, I think he was technically part of the ECW brand at that point. Yeah, I think so. So, like again, I want to see an upstart get this, or I want to see something that's gonna be someone who hasn't been given that opportunity. Natalia, she's like, not been given a ton of opportunities to, but she seems to get injured on a regular basis. So it'd be like when RVD got the briefcase. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I like that, but I just. I would like to see Natalia get it nonetheless. Whether she I cashes like in on Ronda, that would be cool. But I really want Natalia to get that run. Um, boy, a part of me wants to pick uh, with what you were just talking about with this, that CM Punk thing that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, like like the Moon, Ember Moon coming up. You know, uh, it would be awesome talking about that match from uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, uh, she had a hell of a performance mm -hmm. there; looked great in that match. And so, her holding that case, having these outstanding performances in the ring, I think would be kind of cool. Uh, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to what we were talking about with Becky Lynch and that little bit of a redemption story. I even kind of like the idea of of like what you were saying taka with becky lynch even though if even if she has the briefcase maybe going back and forth again with charlotte over on smackdown i mean it's a cool story they even fucking you know defended the briefcase in the past sure, too, and sure. all that shit so. it's not something they, they yeah, do a lot of kennedy 
Not something they, not something they do yes. a lot of, but Protein it's... Protein pokes coming to that play. Possibilities <laughs> there. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of interesting stuff possible in that women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Let's move on to the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Bobby Roode. I'm sorry, Bob Roode. Bob mm, Roode. Bob, Bob Roode. Roode. Bob versus Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, uh, Rusev, Miz, Kevin Owens, a random New Day member, and uh, or an unspecified New Day member, I guess I should say, and Samoa Joe. Uh, <laughs> How about fucking New Day getting those fucking pancakes <laughs> in that briefcase? <laughs> <laughs> Why the hell were Xavier and Kofi in one t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> that know, was probably no one of Just laughing. <laughs> I don't know either. Michael laugh. That was pretty interesting. That, uh, and they're all the way in, what, fucking L.A. doing the fucking video and co- game convention, and they're all the way in Memphis. So it's like, how do they transport that quick? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the big question here is, does a Raw guy get it with uh, with Lesnar holding the title right now, or do they put it on a SmackDown person with the possibility of AJ or Nakamura uh, on top here? I'm going, I'm going Rusev myself. I'm going SmackDown. Rusev. I'm going SmackDown guy. I think the guy's got a... Good momentum. I again. I want to see somebody get that opportunity. But then you gotta choose Lana, because then you gotta have Mister and Mrs. Money in the Bank. Fuck <laughs> Lana. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see what, what else? you did there with that, with that word play. Uh-huh. <laughs> Taco. Damn, Daniel. Um. God, who's Daniel Bryan's on the match. Uh. <laughs> Who, who's in the match again? Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Bob Rude. Bob Rude. Braun Strowman. Finn Balor. Rusev. Miz. Kevin Owens. A New Day member. And Samoa Joe. God, let's see Miz get it. <laughs> Could you... Samoa Joe. Give me the definition of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use it in a sentence? Oh, this isn't a spelling What does that mean? <laughs> get a spelling P. Um... <laughs> No. Um, fuck, man. See, this is one I talked about a couple of weeks ago where I part of me wants The Miz to win it, and I want him to cash it in and fail miserably. I <laughs> see what I did there. And then bitch <laughs> so fucking hard about it where I guess it would be Paige. She'd be like, fine, this is your last chance. Fucking, I'm, I, you're not going to get another shot at the WWE Championship if you're going to be bitching this fucking hard over it. And I actually want him to pick up a victory, one, two, three, clean in the middle of the ring. No bullshit, no shenanigans. Hmm. It's it just, to me, like, um, I kind of look at the aspect of, like, I, 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 I wouldn't be mad at Miz being, like, a WWE champion or even Universal, just a major champion like that, you know, outside of the Intercontinental U.S. champion. I'm not mad at that fact that, you know, he, he is that caliber of a wrestler for WWE, um, or superstar. <laughs> but um, he, he's someone that is believable in their fucking role to be that champion. But I don't want to see him do the Money of the Bank thing again and win it in that Weasley way. I, I want him to actually get that one, two, three defensive pinfall for that major championship. Because not only does it look good for the company, but that's also good for his, you know, his memories, his books, his career. It, it, you know, a legit win for that championship. That's kind of what I want to see to to put Miz in that next tier of you know thinking of him as the you know uh, a main event star outside of the intercontinental championship pitcher that's the only reason i would want miz is to win the the briefcase is to lose it and again that you know one-on-one you know pay-per-view spot and win it that way or on a smackdown even like a big smackdown win that to me would just push him over as a, a bigger star in the WWE, and that's the only way you're going to be able to do that. So you're 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 thinking more along the lines of him winning the winning the briefcase, failing, and, and then and almost a redemption babyface turn for the Miz. Because the crowd's going to pop hard if he wins, no matter what, whether it's with the briefcase or they're they're going to pop hard. I mean, he was a fucking heel when he cashed in the briefcase, and the crowd was like Team Miz all of a sudden. <laughs> it, 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 so it's just like, uh, yeah, I feel like the crowd, no matter where they're at, they're they're going to go nuts for the Miz winning that championship. And yeah, just that, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. That redemption story. It's going to kind of put him in that baby face role. But then you're going to get him the next fucking week, shutting the fuck everyone up and being <laughs> the dick. But just him missing his way into a championship match and actually doing it, 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 it the crowd's going to lose their fucking mind. Did you make your pick, Joe? I, I, 
Uh, yeah, I picked Rusev. Okay, I wanted to talk about Rusev here for just a second here. It was interesting. He had that little match on uh, on SmackDown this week, and he comes out, and uh, you know how I know Rusev is officially a babyface now? Because in his little picture on the <laughs> side, he's smiling. <laughs> 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 because they uh, WWE just bangs people over the head. Baby faces are always smiling, and <laughs> heels are always scowling. So, <laughs> it's, I just, I just, I also uh, close runner up Samoa Joe. Yeah, fucking I, him and AJ for SummerSlam, yeah. dude. Kill it, but right you don't. There. He doesn't need the briefcase for him and AJ at SummerSlam necessarily. Exactly. Either. He's got that bad luck haircut, though, man. He hasn't <laughs> since he got the haircut. Some Mohawk Joe. But but <laughs> th- th- those are my two big guys walking out of the money, the bank. I'm going Miz. I like I like Kevin Owens, and I'm, he's not my pick, but that mm-hmm. he'd be a good guy to have. The, yeah. the briefcase with just lurking sure. around. You've got, you know, Lesnar over there on the Monday Night Raw side, but a lot of people are speculating that Reigns is finally going to defeat Lesnar <laughs> at SummerSlam. Sure he is. Uh, yeah, but we've been saying this for two years now. Uh, <laughs> so, but Kevin Owens is a guy that would do good, I think, with the briefcase. Same thing with Finn Balor, even though he's a babyface, but he's got that backstory of he was the first Universal Champion. He has He's never had a, a, a rematch for it. But so it's a giant Baylor Club logo. Logo all over that briefcase. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking money right there. So those are the the kind of two I'm thinking of. Uh, for as far as a new day member that we want in the match, I mean, any of them would be fun. Xavier Woods would be a ton of fun in a mm-hmm. ladder match like this. Big E'd be you know doing dives and killing <laughs> himself and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And Kofi Kingston, of course, is- he's my wild card. I think it will end up being Kofi, even though he's been in so many. And, like, he's one that I think could steal it. He, like, whereas Taco's got, you know, Samoa Joe as, you know, his follow-up pick. Kofi's my wild card second pick because, like, I feel like he deserves it. Like, I feel like he's earned that, you know, chance. He's been in so many Royal Rumbles and he works his ass off. I wouldn't mind seeing Kofi with the fucking (laughs) New Day with the fucking briefcase, Mm -hmm. technically. Doesn't matter who wins it, New Day has the briefcase. Filling it with pancakes every week, just upsetting the Miz. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and pick Balor, and and he's going to cash in right away and challenge Lesnar at Extreme Rules and some sort of gimmick deal, or maybe it's a straight-up match and every other match on the show is a gimmick (laughs) or or, or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I like that story, so I'm going to pick Balor, much much, much like with the fantasy booking aspect that Taco brought into it with the women's <laughs> side of things. I'm going to pick women. Pick him to 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 cash in right away with the because I, I like that story. So that's who I'm going to pick there. All right. Well, that's our that's predictions money for bank. money in the bank. Now let's move on to NXT Takeover. Oh. Change the subject. NXT. <laughs> A little bit easier task picking NXT TakeOver. <laughs> it's only five matches versus <laughs> 11 for uh, the main Money in the Bank show. So there's that. And again, it'll be better. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good show, I think. Uh, hard to go wrong here. Let's start with the Velveteen Dream versus Ricochet. Uh, nice little build for this. We talked about this right, at, right off the top of the show. A well-built card here. Uh, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I just lost it. Ah, Excuse me. What a rush. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ricochet coming in, uh, looking great, being acrobatic, Velveteen Dream. What 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 is there to say? He's he's fantastic. He's mm-hmm. he's smooth. He's sexy. And he's, during these NXT takeover <laughs> matches, he turns it up a notch. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to see what the airbrush gimmick on his tights is this time. <laughs> uh, some uh, Ricochet's face on his crotch or something like that. Uh, I hope it's just like Aztec shit all over. <laughs> <laughs> the Prince Puma, the Prince, Prince Puma Puma's, is like Puma's all over it. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, but predictions for this a little bit tougher. I'm going to pick Rick. Ricochet, he's coming in, he's hot, but uh, still new to a lot of the WWE crowd, mm-hmm. I think, and Velveteen Dream, a little bit more established, but also the greener of the two. I think they're going to want to push Ricochet a little bit more, at least I hope that's the way they're looking, so I'm picking Ricochet here. Yeah, uh, I'm on the same, uh, Ricochet's got to walk out with the win here, like, it, Velveteen Dream is, he's in a good niche right now where he could lose a match and still look like a million bucks. 
See, and that's the exact same th- way I feel about Ricochet, even though he's newer to the crowd. Again, we still have boners from that flip out of the ring, meaning that he's <laughs> fine if he takes a loss at this NXT TakeOver, especially if it's to Velveteen Dream, who everybody's been enjoying. I mean, besides his Cash Zono win, he doesn't have a great track record at TakeOver right now. I feel like this is the one that sets VD, VD over the top. V- so the VD thing. Joe over there talking VD and boners. And I'm not it's just picking it because... Because he's my fantasy guy for NXT. He's your fantasy VD? Yep. He's my fantasy VD. so profane. Joe? And rude. (laughs) Uh, Velveteen Dream. Taco, who you predicted? Did did you? I went Ricochet. You went Ricochet. Yeah, because Velveteen Dream is one of those ones that could take a loss, but he also does really need a win. Roderick Strong and Kyle O. Who are you choosing? I picked, yeah, Dick. I picked Ricochet. Oh, I see, picked fucking wow. I picked we, we, yeah, Taco. Fuck pay the fuck we? attention. You know what? We are, we all we're all for, forgetful today. <laughs> Suck a fart, Joe. R- Roderick Strong <laughs> and Kyle O'Reilly, the undisputed era, defending their tag team championships versus one and two Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. God um, damn, this is going to be a fun match. Oh man, I mean Kyle O'Reilly and, and, and Pete Dunn on this week's NXT was amazing. What a great match! Make sure you go watch that. I've I, I I've said it before on this show and others. Kyle O'Reilly is my favorite wrestler, <laughs> period, right now. He's just, he's just, he goes balls yeah. out in the ring. Yeah. I mean, the, he, the, that match with Pete Dunne was just nonstop until the late Man. stages of the thing. They just kept going and going and going, and it's hard strikes and, and legit looking, you know, grappling shit at the beginning of the match. <laughs> it's just, it's so fun to watch him go. It's different. Yes, you know? yes. And, and the way his swagger when he comes out, rocking the fucking belt like a guitar. Well, it was like, it, even, even tonight he walked. Walked out, not doing it. Stops. He's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows. He knows what's up. So yeah, I, I love that. I love the 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 the, the violence that Oni Lorcan brings. Danny yes. Birch with his grappling style. Roderick Strong is a, a hard hitter. This is going to be a hell of a match. <laughs> We're going to see some purple chests. Yeah, and this is going to be again nonstop because you got four guys in here that can go, and so whenever someone's you know, getting tired, someone else is going to come in to mm-hmm. fucking just go some more. So this is just going to be here insane. comes that guy flying that you thought was tired. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So, th- yeah, this is going to be a fucking fantastic match. I'm going to pick uh, Undisputed Era to retain here. How about you guys? I think Bobby Fish kind of makes his comeback to help out Undisputed Era, Ooh. and they keep those titles, because I feel like he's been in that brace for a while. A little skullduggery. Skullduggery. Mm-hmm. Same Undisputed. Yeah. Yeah, and the skullduggery is a natural story with them being the heels, of course. And But yeah, it should be a hell of a fucking match. So. Well, and again, th- this is their first, you know, big match for Team 1-2, so like... They, we can build them up a little bit, and again, if Skullduggery is used, that just you know makes them look even more legit. So let's you know let's see how this plays out. That they, they could play out into a really good tag team. Nikki Cross versus Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, nice little build up for this. Nikki Cross is a maniac. Shayna Baszler feels legit when she wins the championship. She goes to the back, and everybody's scared of her. That means they respect her. <laughs> uh, just a great little build up mm-hmm. here. Uh, the the thing that. She, that Baszler did with Dakota Kai, intimidating her, having the match. Dakota Kai gaining a little bit of confidence coming out of that, but uh, Baszler winning, of course, and the thing with Nikki Cross, and it just... Do it. Good Do stuff, it. good stuff. Do it. <laughs> uh, I like Nikki Cross getting the visual pin with Dakota Kai making the count uh, in the build to this, uh, but I think I think Baszler's going to retain here, and possibly Nikki Cross goes up to join her sanity mates on uh, on SmackDown, hopefully. That's what I'm hoping that the yeah. sanity delay has been. This is <laughs> the way for Nikki Cross to get out of this title spot. But um, too bad we can't find out a, a reason why the authors of Pain have been delayed. <laughs> well, and I don't think that Nikki Cross is going to be joining Sanity anytime soon. Like I just think that they kept. Boom. I'm not saying it's right, Tommy. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm disappointed, but I think they want to see her in the big time. I think they want to see her watch. in these big matches. So I actually think Cross is going to take it. Because Ooh. we can set up a good feud between these two, a good back and forth feud. Because, I mean, besides, I mean, Bianca Belair is looking good. You've got a couple other decent women in the match, and Kyrie Sand. That's like it. You know, you don't have.
have a lot of top tier women. So going back and forth between Baszler and Cross for the next few months till the SummerSlam takeover, it's not a, that's not a bad thing to me. And right now she's the vet of the NXT women. <laughs> and there's no reason that, you know, again, I'm not saying Sanity's going to be off that long, but there's no reason that she can't play a part in whatever Sanity's doing at SummerSlam. True story. Uh, Taco, did you make your prediction here? Um, <clears throat> did I? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Baszler's going to retain. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I like I like what you're saying there, Joe, with, with these two going and not a lot going on. But I love the way that they've been building up <clears throat> uh, Bianca Belair or Bianca Blue Lips as <laughs> yeah, she was on this cow. week. But, yeah, she's, she's going to have the match with Dakota Kai. So, but, uh, this, what a great storytelling there because Dakota Kai, she's been on the decline. She had the little the, 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 the match with the champion, uh, Shayna Baszler. Uh, she's looking to gain some momentum and same thing with Bianca Belair you know they're building her up with video packages had a nice squash win this week where she's fucking press slamming the chick and, and into the turnbuckle yeah. yeah yeah good stuff from her Ali looked really good like oh, she changed her whole look I heard the cat ears and all that silly yep. stuff so yeah, that's what I was kind of saying earlier in the podcast is tonight's uh, NXT was kind of a, a night where they're setting stuff up for the future it's like oh what's gonna yeah. happen with these ladies and Bianca Belair's promo against uh Dakota Kai, it's like, oh, fuck yeah, we're going to see more of these ladies, too. It's like, yes, excitement after TakeOver. But then you br- brought up the Kyrie Sane thing, too. I, f- I feel like that's a, a big match that could happen. Even though we've seen it a couple of times between Baszler and Sane, I think with the championship on the line, that's the highest uh, stakes mm-hmm. you could have at, at NXT. So I think that's something they could build up to That'll for be, uh, something SummerSlam. interesting to, to uh, defend that championship at, too, during like the Mae Young Classic. Having All right. the two winners for the strap. Not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on for the NXT Championship. Alistair Black versus Lars Sullivan. Lars, 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 Lars. Lars. <laughs> It's just, again, Lars fucking, the uh, freak <laughs> accidents and flailing his body and spitting <laughs> flying and him just screaming and yelling. I'm enjoying the presentation of Lars Sullivan. I'm very, and, and it's been, uh, twice now we've seen Lars go off on Alistair Black, so I am yearning for the moment that Alistair Black kicks him in the face with the black mm-hmm. mass so that's i mean that's the whole story mm-hmm. here is like let we're just waiting for that to happen and the one two three and i'm excited for it and i'm i'm i'm, I'm predicting that alistair black wins with the black mass because it's just something that we've been waiting for and uh it's I, gonna be multiple black mass you say I, think. I, I hope it takes at least two of them I, I, i'm I, thinking three i hope he i hope they don't do a spot where lars kicks out of it but i hope they do it so that yeah he has to actually he either chooses to kick him three times or he kicks him and it's not enough to take Cut, him down. exactly like he t- <laughs> takes one kick in the face and he's like <laughs> and then bam another one he's right, gone like right. yeah that's kind of what i'm looking forward to yeah, that's just... double your pleasure double your fun <laughs> 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 yeah i think that would be really good and lars isn't going to lose a lot of momentum losing to alistair black here and you know he can you can build him up and I mean, you don't even have a North American championship being uh, defended on this card, which is interesting mm-hmm. with it, uh, you know, no, be, being def- being defended at Evolve. Right, with the whole Walter thing. But awesome. I mean, that's another title that's around that uh, Lars could challenge for at, at some point, too. So uh, good stuff there. Any different prediction from you, to, uh, Joe? Black is where it's at. All right. And then finally, <laughs> in the Chicago street fight, Johnny Gargano versus Tomasa Champa. This is going to be a fucking shootout. It's bang, bang. <laughs> Chicago's Tyrak, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's uh that's a that's a sad story there but uh, hey fucking real life. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh but uh, hell I mean hell of a match at WrestleMania yes. weekend. Uh they've done a I mean this is a, a story a year in the making. The breakup was at the Takeover Chicago mm-hmm. last year after the tag match with the Authors of Pain. So uh is the the, the question here is is this the final match. The last match was the unsanctioned match. This match is the street fight. So, of course, the... This matchup is now anything goes. So, I mean, how much more can you do here? Does Champa get the win here? And do they bring this back SummerSlam weekend, NXT TakeOver mm-hmm. Brooklyn 4, for some sort of blow-off cage match, whatever. Hell in a Cell, baby. Hell in a Cell. First ever Hell in a Cell for NXT. That's certainly... Something of that nature, I'm be, thinking. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I, I, I'm thinking they can get one more match Straight out of this. Straight jacket match. 
because pe- only. people are, are hot for the match. But yeah, it's just a matter of <laughs> what they do. So if if that's the case, yeah, I'm picking Champa in this one. Some sort of I, I don't know if it's a Candice LeRae distraction. Maybe he just gets the upper hand and just beats Gargano so bad that she throws in the towel. <laughs> uh, that, that could be a possibility there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm picking Champa in this one. I, I feel like champ has got to get this win. I think with his attitude and just the overall change of everything about him, he needs this solid win over Gargano. One, two, three, whether or not it's, you know, the what, what kind of match? Last man standing? Or? This is a street fight. Street fight. Right. Sorry. So so you got your street fight. So this is just going to get real fucking nasty. Again, <laughs> we're, we haven't gotten a straight up one-on-one match with these guys, and I think that's what's going to cap it off as a true wrestling match between these two. That would be so interesting that they would start it off with these two <laughs> massive brawls un, you know anything goes all that stuff and then come but back think about their with a straight up yeah their cruiserweight classic match it was one of the best matches yeah. mm-hmm. of the of the tournament so they can put in a decent match and i think it's like your uh was it kushida and show uh, uh yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah 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 the they just nothing but grappling. Yeah, maybe the crowd won't react to it as much. It's but hard to, to true fans, we're going to enjoy that a lot. I, it's a possibility, but I think it's a little hard to put the the glue Stop back. Stop crushing the, my dream. The, the glue back into the bottle at this point, just because they've had these two amazing brawls, basically. But yeah, it, it does raise the what? I mean, can Ch- stick on a pole. Champa wins, then they come back to for the rubber match, and they could just do another basically no, no DQ, anything goes thing. That's a match. They both have been the what same match so uh, <laughs> again it's hard to go from from stipulations to less stipulations but they could do it so but uh, either way Champ, i'm Champa thinking still gets the win i'm thinking yeah i'm thinking champa gets the win skullduggery or what i mean it's no dq so there's obviously going to be <laughs> shit involved uh so but then you come back for the rubber match at, at the for SummerSlam. that's what i think taco i, I- I don't want to say I'm over this feud. I want to see these guys wrestle like all the fucking time, but fight forever. Uh, it, it's just also too one of those those facts. So it's like, yeah, it's we're kind of a year in now, you know, and uh, Champa's kind of missed a good part of NXT being injured, uh, and we still need to get uh, um, Gargano the the NXT title redemption story. So it's yeah. like, does he win here? Does he go to SummerSlam weekend and face? champion that weekend black you know uh, and finally win the championship there or does he lose and we finally send him to main roster or does <laughs> Ciampa lose and get sent to the main roster i'm leaning on the Ciampa side I, I think he needs to win this one and just uh, uh kind of r- run amok us through nxt i'm kind of more on the Ciampa versus black side my, myself <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome I, I i like either either one of those guys versus black or whoever the, the champion I just, is we've seen argano the championship spot so many times we already got fucking a hell of a match with him and Andrade. I, I kind of want to see Gargano get out of NXT at this point, to be honest. Yeah, but I, I want to see them wrap. I, I think they can get more out of the Gargano Champa story. You think they're still going to go a couple more months with this? I, I think. I think. I they, think so. I think they take it to SummerSlam, and that's the final match. And then you move on from there. Kind of go to like an alternate world right now, but uh, it's kind of a storyline. It's kind of the same parallel with them. It's the the Edwards Callahan story and Impact. You know, with old baseball bat, and yeah. it, it's kind of been fun seeing Eddie Edwards become this piece of shit. He's starting to become the heel. He's starting. To be the villain. His own wife doesn't even like him anymore. Ooh. Well, that's kind of what's going on in NXT. Gargano's kind of being the coming the shithead. His wife is getting pissed at him. So, uh, you know, are we eventually going to see Gargano be a fucking madman? See, I didn't think I didn't look at it that way. I felt it like more. It was like she was just she can't take this fighting anymore. Like Champa used to be a friend. This is ridiculous. And then you guys are just going. You're going to kill each other. You know, I'm getting knocked down. I'm. Get, I've got to get away from this. She's mm-hmm. like for her own. Her own peace of mind and safety. She has to withdraw <laughs> herself from the situation. But but and, how far is Gargano going to go after this last attack? I mean, Christ, it cost him a fucking championship match. Well, that's the thing is now now Gargano's pissed off and now he's, and now he's, he's taunting his wife and he's, and he's lost his focus and so that's going to be his downfall. Champa gets the win now. Now he's going to be Gargano's going to be down and out. He's going to he's going to have to refocus. <laughs> he's going to have to clean things up with his wife. Fix fix that that, that mend that that that. Relationship relationship or whatever and come back and prove that he is the better wrestler against champa one more time <laughs> at at takeover but i mean you're right too how many the, times are we gonna do the gargano just give me one more man he's not <laughs> christian all right well I mean, one more match 
But I mean, it, it is the natural story, unless <laughs> unless Gargano just wins again here, and then they just move on. That's certainly a possibility too. Because uh, I, I I actually but that's li- the fun of this. Is there's so many possibilities. Because I, I like the idea of Gargano going for the championship again. Again, every time he went for it, something you know, mm-hmm. Champa or whoever got involved and got fucked his up his, his <laughs> opportunity. Yeah, he lost to to Andrade, but I mean that was two champions ago or whatever. So, but again, you're, you're right too. In fact, with the fact that what's next for Champa too? That I mean, that's an interesting story. You know, Lars Sullivan's out there. You know, <laughs> so oh, man. Uh, and Adam Cole and. Roderick Strong and so many potential opponents here. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff. So looking forward to this weekend. A couple more things before we get out of here. we got to talk about our retro recommendation for the week. Retro recommendation! As we open up the squeaky door to the vault. I love uh, that bean I ate. What's that? <laughs> that was that bean I ate. Bean I ate? The yeah. bean I ate. Just one bean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for this week, we went back on the WWE Network. <laughs> and went we should have it, like, freeze and think it did. <laughs> <laughs> went back to WrestleMania 24 at the Citrus Bowl 10 years ago, 2008. Wow. Uh, the Money in the Bank ladder match, of course, with the pay-per-view this weekend. We watched a couple of Money in the Bank ladder matches. This one was recommended to us by one of our listeners on Twitter. This time it was CM Punk versus Mr. Kennedy. John Morrison, a young babyface looking yeah. John Morrison. Carlito's in this thing. Shelton. Benjamin, <laughs> MVP out there, and Chris, a young-looking Chris Jericho as yeah. well compared to how he looks uh, these <laughs> with days. With pants. Yeah, with pants, you know, 39 or 37 years old. You know, John Morrison, I think, was like 29. or, or No, CM Punk was 29 at the time because he's 39 right right about now. So <laughs> <laughs> He's that fucking old fighting. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so this was, uh, this, was, oh, this was just an interesting little time capsule. I mean, just 10 years ago with, you you know, CM Punk, uh, John Morrison, who's doing stuff all over Impact mm-hmm. and Lucha Underground now. He's really kind of come into his own being away from WWE. Where he Shown was, of sexy. He was just kind of a guy uh, back here in this match. And so I uh, just thought it was really, really interesting. We talked about already how, how CM Punk won the match, being like a, he was still an ECW guy uh, mm-hmm. at the time. So yeah, because uh, what's his name uh, was doing commentary. Everybody was doing commentary. Right? I, there were literally six people. People doing commentary on this match. It was uh, Jim Ross, uh, uh, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lawler, uh, uh, Ad- uh, Michael Cole. I wanted to say Adam Cole. <laughs> uh, the, the fucking coach was there. Joey Styles, Joey Taz, Styles. Taz was there as well. <laughs> so they had si- it was ten people or what? Seven people in the match. Six people on commentary. It was ridiculous. You yeah. think the three man booth is ridiculous now? At least <laughs> they actually did a pretty good job with it. They weren't talking all over each no, other. They were pretty good about so, it. So, but still, it was like, what are we? Holy doing here. shit, did people hate MVP? <laughs> I don't remember him having that much heat. Yeah. It was insane. And then seeing Matt Hardy. Yeah, that, that, that was, was pretty fun. weird. Yeah, Matt Hardy after five months of being out from yeah, Matt Hardy. Said. Matt Hardy did a run in and did the twist of fate off the ladder to MVP because MVP took him out with a knee injury. That was part of the story at the time. But yeah, seeing a young Matt Hardy run in, you know, from ten years ago, seeing uh, ju- looks just as old as he does now. Shelton Benjamin again, like exactly he, the same. <laughs> the fucking ladder bump he takes in that match. Yeah. Yeah, well, and how about that the swinging pendulum uh, uh, teeter totter <laughs> ladder spot that they did with? They got one ladder stuck in another ladder, and and, and Jim Morris, John Jim Morrison, John Morrison climbs up the ladder that's not. It, it's just yeah. being held up by another ladder on the ground, basically. You can even see Punk kind of like reaching for it, like uh, the safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy. Uh, what about before the match in the back? Kim Kardashian doing like a quick intro backstage and Mr. <laughs> Kennedy coming up and cutting a promo uh, before the match. <laughs> the story of the match was that CM Punk almost won it last year mm. and that Mr. Kennedy stole the victory from him last year. So that came kind of played into what happened in this match as well. Um yeah, and that was pretty much that's pretty much the highlights. Yeah, CM Punk won the match and and so the backflip from Benjamin with the ladder. That was fun. Yep, yep, yep. To the outside of there. Wasn't that Morrison? Was it you know, yeah, sure. 
Well, they did. No, yeah, no, they, <laughs> it was Morrison. Well, then, no, the, Shelton Benjamin was on a ladder and they tipped it over and he did the flip bump through the ta- through the bridge, oh, the, oh, yeah. the bridge yeah, ladder the, on the outside, oh. and then the uh, and then uh, Benjamin did the sunset flip power bomb onto somebody who is who is superplexing. <gasps> superplex. Yeah, and Morrison uh, was on top of the ladder and fucking ah, oh, god damn. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, crazy match. Woo! Not very long, though. Again, like some of these earlier ones, you know, we're talking like 13, 14 minutes. That's amazing. It, 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 felt, but that's, I, it felt like a good amount of time to yes. get everything in. And, again, nonstop action here. And uh, I was looking at the timestamp. So, WrestleMania, 10 years ago, less than four hours. Oh, man. <laughs> Money in the Bank this Sunday, probably five hours. <laughs> you know, 11 fucking matches. Probably Jeez. more matches. One thing yes. we forgot than, to bring up is... Uh, what kind of fucking contraption are we going to get built in the fucking ring this time? Right. With like, the ladders. What are they going to put together? Yeah. Because, again, we got Shelton Benjamin, and we he's known to build shit in I Money in the Bank matches. Like, 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 fucking, like, like, uh, uh, um, Thanks for Lashley to come and crawl under and climb on. It's like, what are you doing here, Lashley? This isn't your obstacle course. <laughs> and he's not in the match. Neither is Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's bummer that. shit. Uh, wow, we're bringing that down. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, fun <laughs> match here. Uh, it'd be interesting to go and see what CM Punk's cash in was like. I don't remember. Uh, was that the one on Jeff Hardy? Could have been. I don't know. Sure. Basically, it, it was devastating to me because I was huge on Jeff Hardy at the point. But he, uh, it's at Extreme Rules the following year. Uh, he, Jeff Hardy finally beats Edge. Pulls him through the ladder, and he has to watch Jeff Hardy pick it, and then CM Punk kept cashing in. Ah. And then he made his baby face to heel switch literally overnight because people were like, but Jeff Hardy uh, won. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, it, that that's actually one of my favorite cash-ins. Mm-hmm. All right, for next week, the retro recommendation is going to be CM Punk, uh, carry, carrying on the CM Punk theme here with the trial, the fight oh, last oh. week. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. I didn't realize it was CM Punk who won this ladder match this week. We were just going with a ladder. <laughs> ladder match thing so that ties in nicely here but yeah we're going to do cm punk versus daniel bryan from over the limit 2012 so look that one up follow along for next week all right let's get out of here give us our matches of the week for this week match of the week joe what is your match of the week oh why do i gotta start (laughs) (laughs) because yours is the weakest yeah i know (laughs) I'm, I'm honestly going with the women's four way on Raw that opened the show. I thought that the women were slugging hard, like especially again Natalia really proved something in this match to me that she can hang, and her getting the surprise win to me, like I didn't think she was going to get a solid confidence building win going into Money in the Bank, especially with the knee injury that she had <laughs> last week with Nia. And uh, again, after a, a, a Raw that I was sour on the week before, this opening the show, I thought, again, it was a good mm-hmm. match, good physicality. I liked Ember Moon in the match, like I was saying earlier. Very impressive. So, uh, yeah, good match, good solid match. Taco, what's your match of the week? Um, honestly, I'm going to Impact again. They started off Impact with DJ Z and Everett against... Uh, uh, they defended their uh, tag championships against Drago and Aerostar. And oh. It was just uh, a good... Uh, it, Speaking of Lucha Underground. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, you know, a good showcase of the Lucha Underground guys is a good way to start the Impact. Impact was, you know, nothing to really brag about. So, um, yeah, they, you know, continuing the the story, good storytelling there, and you know, solid match matches from them. But yeah, good match to, to start off the impact. You know, a lot of high spots, high flying moves, and you know, Drago and Aerostar, they're never really disappointing to watch either. No, and same with DJZ. Not. So yeah, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if you're curious about impact, you know, uh, you know, before we started the podcast, you know, there's tons of good fucking wrestling matches this week. But I kind of want to. Pick, pick an oddball out there, something that's just like, okay, wow, didn't think of that one. And, yeah, fucking Impact. They started off with a banger this week, last week. For Tommy, sure, for sure. what is your match of the week? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You know, <laughs> it, it was an easy decision, but also a hard decision because there were so many great so matches many. Uh, on the Dominion show. I'm going to go with the obvious answer here. Uh, Kazuchika Okada versus Kenny Omega, mm. their fourth match ever. Uh, we talked about this ad nauseum over on Strong Honor, but... Uh, 
two out of three falls, no time limit, an hour plus match here between yeah. these two. They tell such a great story with the first fall, Okada getting the victory with a leverage pin, so you don't get to see anybody's finisher, and the fact that Omega has to come back and win two consecutive falls over or, or over Okada to yes. win. He does that, hits his hits his finisher, the one winged angel for the second fall, and then uh, Okada is out of it completely, out of it going into the third fall, but man manages at the beginning of the third fall to avoid another one-winged angel and hit his finisher, the Rainmaker. (laughs) Now everybody's down, and oh my God, what's going to happen next? But it was Omega getting the one-winged angel twice uh, with a V-trigger in between at the end of the match and getting the, uh, the huge victory over the... A uh, record-setting champion Okada and uh, start, starting a new era in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's a and, whole different world over there. Yeah, and it, oh, man, it's so, it was so so good and a great story over the past year and a half yes. between Omega and Okada uh, wrapped up here very nicely. And so many questions going forward: Who's going to win the big tournament this year? Who's going to go to Wrestle Kingdom and challenge for the championship? Mm-hmm. And other great stories coming out of the show. You know, it was hard to pick because Naito beating or. Uh, Jericho beating Naito is a huge story. Hiromu beating yes. uh, Will Ospreay is is big. So uh, even the Young Bucks winning the the tag For championships sure. is is huge. So uh, and the never open weight championship <laughs> changing hands. You know, it's so, yeah, we uh, don't need to bring that. Uh, well, all the titles changing hands except for the junior tag titles at the mm. beginning of the show is a story. Yeah, it's a and big so deal. There's a, a lot of things shifting and changing now in New Japan, and you know, what's hot becomes even hotter uh, right now. So. So uh, very excited about what's going on yes, in New Japan yes. and everything check it out. going forward. So, yeah, check, check out that Strong out. Again, I, I, they're hour long, I believe, the second match, the 60-minute time limit. Yep. from uh, year, That from one's the- on YouTube. Like, straight up on YouTube. They posted it on the New Japan I think, YouTube. yeah, that, that was their free match So, I mean, if you want to get an idea week. of what these guys can do, watch that match. It'll give you the idea of what a two out of three falls match with no <laughs> time limit they can do. Well, and the, the other great thing I didn't bring up here is that they they constantly call back to moves and, 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 and spots that they did in those previous matches that, that stood out. Like, oh, my God, that, they did this before. Are they going to do that again? Oh, my God. So, uh, just great in-ring Heck storytelling yeah. there. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Finally, long show this week with our predictions and all the topics, but a lot of fun stuff to talk about this week. So we appreciate what you. A week it's been. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> you guys sticking around and, and listening to the show. And, and uh, I'm, gl- I'm hoping everybody's liking the new format, too. So, all right, let's get out of here. Follow the show at BPW Podcast. Follow me at Tommy Stryker. Spell Stryker with a Y. Best Pro Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. And Taco, where can people find you? Ooh. Follow me on Twitter at HGREV Taco. I'll bring up SLTD Wrestling. Yes, Check us Thank out you. there. Uh, they've got a fantasy league, they've got a predictions league, tons of fun stuff. And you can follow me, Joe, at Joe BPWP. That's at Joe, Best Pro Wrestling yes, Podcast. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Joe. SLTD Wrestling. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Uh, is that that website you can find this podcast strong honor and all that other stuff joe was talking about all right we're out of here rate review subscribe all that happy horse shit bye peace (laughs) test 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 okay testing Testies, 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 balls, 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 in your face, in your face, balls in your face, balls, 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 balls in your face, balls in your face, balls, balls, okay, I think we got it.